Same thing here in this one. Okay, so basically now we've got a scale that should seem familiar. We just don't have the roots circled. Okay, the reason I got rid of the roots is because I want you to think for a minute instead of these notes right here being the roots of A major. I want you to think about for, for the minute from the root being from this note right here and this note right here and this note right here. Okay, now listen to what it would sound like if I hear this is the root. Just check out the sound of the scale. Same fingering, but now the tonic feels like this is the beginning of the scale. This feels like the tonic of the scale, okay? It's the same notes as A major pentatonic. But we're gonna start it and think about the tonic from the F sharp, okay? Now listen to the sound of the scale. You can hear that there's a difference if you think of this as the tonic. And the main difference right away is that instead of the first note being a major second like we had in the major pentatonic and the, th the second note being the major third, we have what's called a minor, minor third happening right away in the scale. So it makes it sound like a minor scale. So listen to this. Now if that sounds like a minor scale, then what minor scale is it? Well it sounds a lot like F sharp minor, okay? but it's exactly the same fingering as A major, okay? But it has a different uh, tonic uh, basis when I started from F sharp and I played against an F sharp minor chord. It sounds like F sharp minor pentatonic. So what I'm trying to show you is that every major pentatonic scale that you learn also has an internal minor pentatonic scale within it, okay? And that's an important bit of information to understand. So when you learned A major pentatonic the other day, and we played a progression, you were, in a way, you were also learning F sharp minor pentatonic, right? Okay, because it's within the same pentatonic scale. So we're not gonna learn a new pattern today. We're gonna take these patterns that we've learned and now think of them as a minor pentatonic scale. Okay, so let's do that. And you'll understand more about this concept when we start to get into more harmony. But I'm just gonna make you understand right now that this is the root of a minor pentatonic scale. And then likewise on this scale pattern right here, where we thought of this note as the root, we're gonna call the note that's a minor third down from the root. In other words, on the first finger in this case, right, once again, it's F sharp. That's gonna be our root. The next root. Okay, so we're now we've got minor pentatonics. Right? And you can just tell by the way I'm playing it now, and probably you're hearing it at home. Right? When I land on the tonic a lot, the F sharp. sounds more minor, it sounds more bluesy because of the, 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 the minor third uh, emphasis in my scale. Right? Right? So we haven't really learned a new pattern, we've just learned a new way of looking at the pattern. That's what's so cool about it. Okay? So let's, do, let's play the pattern now and think of it not as A major, but check it out, as F sharp minor. Okay, and an interesting thing, when, you, when I'm holding the F sharp minor chord, right, 
think about what that chord comes from. That chord comes from uh, what would be considered an open E minor shape that we learned a while ago that is now brought up to F sharp. And because we know that the, the open E chords become movable forms when we put our bar here, there's our movable minor chord form. Okay, here was E minor, here's F sharp minor, right here. And notice the roots are right here. And here's the same roots that apply to the same scale. So it, it all ties together really nicely. So this would be called a pattern four because of the roots. Remember we talked about the numbering system in other uh, lessons. This is just a pattern four minor chord. And this is a pattern four minor pentatonic. And then this would be the same situation. We have a pattern four or pattern two minor chord because the whole scale is based on around the root location of pattern two that we learned uh, originally from, from our major chords. This was a pattern two shape in major and anything that has this root combination is a pattern two chord or scale. And here it is in this position on F sharp minor. Okay, so I just wanted to point that out. Okay, so let's play. Let's play uh, our newly appreciated minors pentatonic scale from the root, like this. We'll go just up the scale and back down all the way up to that note. One, two, three, four. That's really great uh, in a lot of ways. It's the perfect scale for a lot of rock, blues, uh, R&B, jazz, all kinds of things you can play with this, a minor pentatonic scale. Okay, you can even play, believe it or not, over major chords, dominant chords. That's what's so great about rock, rock and roll and blues is there's a lot of uh, contrasting sort of sounds you can put over chords and st they still sound great. They sound, they give you tension and they give you color but they sometimes break the rules of music theory, but they still sound great, okay? So that was our minor pentatonic, right? Um, let's do the minor pentatonic up here on the ninth position, okay? And let's start it from the root. The lowest note, of course, is the C sharp, but we're gonna start on the root. Here we go. One, two, three, four. feels pretty good, doesn't it? It's very comfortable to play, making sure that all your fingers are over the right frets, and it's a very efficient technique. Again, one, two, three, four. Notice that it has a little bit of a darker, harder edge sound when I hear it against the minor. It sounds a little bit more want to bend the notes a little bit when I play. We're, we're going to talk about string bending more in other lessons, but it just has that feel to it. I like the, I like the attitude of this scale. It just sounds a little bit more rock and roll, and that's what's cool about it. Okay, so, now this scale, of course, is movable. I can put it in other positions, in other keys. Just like the minute, the minute I put my first finger in a different position, it becomes that root. So here it is in A minor pentatonic. Right here it is in D minor pentatonic. Right here it is in E minor pentatonic. This the same pattern. I'm just moving up and down the neck, right? So and of course the same thing holds true for this one. So this was F sharp minor pentatonic. But here it is in D minor pentatonic. Okay, so that's what's so great about it. Okay, um, let's see now. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you also a pattern now. This is going to be our first sequence in pentatonic that we're going to talk about. Okay, we've talked about uh, warm up exercises and things like that, but I want to talk about a sequence. Okay, a sequence could be simply an order of the notes that you play to make a pattern, okay?
okay? This isn't really a sequence when we do this. It's just up and down the scale. Okay, a sequence would be a, a consistent order of notes that repeats as you ascend or descend, okay, in a pattern. Okay, so here would be a pattern in, in a sequence. Four notes, right? And let's say I want to go four notes again, but I want to start on the next note of the scale. So I'm going to start here, and then I'm going to ascend from the next note of the scale up four more notes. So it's going to sound like this. Right? So what's the next note I'm going to ascend from? The next note of the scale. Right? And I'm just going to keep doing that. Right? That's called a group of four. And that is what makes a sequence because it's a pattern that's repeating as it ascends up the scale. So it's repeating one. One note at a time, up the scale, but it's doing it in a group of four. Okay, so that's called a group of four. It's a minor pentatonic sequence. There's a million patterns and sequences that you can make up. I think that's just a good one to start with. So if I played it, like this, with my metronome, it'd be sounding like this. Two, three, four. Okay, group of four. Now you could go the same thing and you could do it backwards. Two, three, four, like this. Basically, that's, uh, that's a simple sequence, and it's great for warming up. It's great for riffing on. It just sounds musical. There's something, there's something that works with sequences when you use them in a solo. You don't want to do it all the time, but a sequence always sounds musical when you plug it into a solo somewhere. So the, uh, the last thing we're going to do now to make this fun for you guys at home, and I know it's all about having fun, is we're going to play along with a progression that I've made up. And I've written the progression in E, so um, maybe it would be, I don't know, would it make sense to have it over here so you can see the patterns of the scales while I'm playing the progression? How about that? That work? And that way you can see those and you can also see that, okay? But now notice that I wrote it in E, okay? So what does that mean? That means I'm gonna now have to take this F sharp pentatonic and I'm gonna have to find, the. I only know it in two positions, but I have to find the two that I know and make it fit E, okay? So I've got no problem with that because there's F sharp, I know that's the root. I bring it up to E, I play that pattern and I play it at the 12th fret and I've got E minor pentatonic. And I've got the other pattern right there and I put this note on an E and there we go, there's my E minor pentatonic. And there's my two two scale patterns and it's going to work beautifully over this progression which is going to sound like this now. Two, oh by the way these are as we learned in other lessons these are these are eighth notes this is an eighth note rest and this is an upbeat eighth note on the end of two these are two eighth notes on the downbeat of three and the end of three and this is a quarter note rest so if you count it up like this it's going to sound like this three and four and <laughs> Simile means keep doing it. So there's our basic progression. I'm using open string chords that we've already learned, but it's just going to be perfect for our new uh, pentatonic scale. So let's try along. Let's try jamming it along with my sequence, and I'll show you how great this scale will work now. Okay, here we go. Here's the sequence. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. 